Hey Optimancers, Chris here. Uh, so I'm going to be continuing my series on the Cleric. And on this week's video, we're going to talk about how to play a Cleric effectively. Uh, in other words, the tactics for a Cleric. Uh, so this will be a shorter video than I did with Wizards because frankly, uh, Cleric's tactics are far more straightforward than they are with the Wizard uh, because they have, you know, less spell options, but the spell options they have are so clearly defined as to what is good uh, versus what you should be doing once in a while that, to a large degree, our tactics are kind of set up for us. Uh, so what I want to start with is talking about how we deal with low-level clerics and how we deal with mid-level clerics and how things will change when we become a high-level cleric. So let's get started. So first thing, when you are a first level cleric, uh, the thing I always recommend is uh, on your equipment, starting equipment, you're going to have the option of scale mail or chain mail if you are proficient in heavy armor and a shield. And where are those? Uh, and if you would be a cleric that you're thinking might want to do stealth once in a while, then look at maybe getting a breastplate later on, but it's not something I would recommend going for at level one. At level one, one of the advantages of a cleric over other spellcasting classes is you are going to walk into your very first session with an 18 armor class, and that's going to be achieved with scale mail plus a 14 dexterity, which will give you a base 16, plus you put on your shield, that's 18, or the chain mail gives you a base 16, plus your shield gives you 18. 18 armor class is the best armor class you're going to get with a first level caster. You will already, hopefully have already made your decision on whether you are going to be using a weapon primarily or whether you're going to stick with cantrips. Uh, and if you are going to use a weapon, you probably still want to have an attack cantrip, whether it's Sacred Flame or Toll the Dead, uh, just as a backup because you're not always going to be in range for your weapon or have the opportunity to use a weapon. It just gives you that little bit of versatility. If you're beginning with an attack cantrip, you might not even have a weapon. Uh, it really is up to you. I would generally say if you have a decent dexterity, you should probably pick up a light crossbow. Uh, but other than that, you may not need a melee weapon at all. So generally, when you are a level one cleric, uh, you're going to have two spell slots. Uh, so you can cast two first level spells. Uh, and the two spells I would definitely recommend you have on your list are Bless and Healing Word. And remember, you can change these with any long rest, so you're not stuck into these. But at level one, these will be your two best options. Now, in just a standard combat with a first level cleric, uh, there's not a lot to it. You have a good armor class, your hit points aren't bad, uh, so you're going to go into combat. If you have a melee weapon, you're just going to walk up into melee and start hitting stuff. And if you have a cantrip, you're going to start just blasting stuff with your cantrip. Uh, because you have a good armor class, you're probably not going to be hit very often. And when you're hit, you have at least a reasonable amount of hit points that you can take a hit or two. In a lot of ways, your character's going to feel like playing a martial class uh, because martial classes aren't getting a lot at level one, too. You might hit a little less often. You might do a little less damage, but the differences won't be major. Uh, but your advantage over them is, number one, you have the ability to cast cantrips. You'll probably have the guidance cantrip. You'll be using it all the time. And in addition, when you're in combat, you will have two spell options. Uh, the standard one I recommend is Bless. Uh, bless is going to be something you're going to cast when a combat appears to be a tough combat. Because in Dungeons & Dragons, we kind of have our combats that are kind of on the easier side, and then we ha often have kind of that end combat that's tougher. When you come up in that end combat, on round one, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cast Bless. And with Bless, you're not going to be targeting your cantrip users. You are going to be targeting your weapon users, including yourself if you are a weapon user. Uh, so your fighters, your barbarians, your rogues, and yourself maybe, but you'll be picking the three offensively strongest characters. Those are the ones who want the bless. And that additional d4 to hit is going to turn a lot of misses into hits, and it will improve your entire party's offensive capability. Now your second spell slot, I suggest you hang on to it, and that will be used for your healing word. And the point you will use healing word is when you are in an important combat and an ally goes down. 
Never use healing word when you're in the middle of combat and somebody's getting low on hit points. Because often you, what you could do is you could cast the healing word and they still go down after the next attack. It's not worth it. Uh, what you want to do is wait until an ally goes down. Then you're going to use your bonus action on your next round to cast the healing word and bring them back up. And that's really it. First level, really easy for a cleric. And what I will mention is at first level uh, and the very low levels, these are the levels where a cleric that uses a weapon over cantrips has an advantage uh, because you will find that weapons hit more often than people fail their saves on the cantrips and you will find that the weapons do more damage than the cantrips do. This will probably hold from levels 1 through 4. So if you are playing in a campaign that's going to spend a lot of time at very low levels, I would generally recommend that you consider going with a weapon using cleric. Uh, if you are going to be going in a campaign that maybe is starting at a higher level or is planning to progress to a higher level reasonably quickly, that's when I would probably recommend going with a cleric that uses cantrips over weapons. There are certain exceptions to this rule. For example, if you are a light cleric, uh, you might find you become quite effective at level 2, uh, but these are general guidelines. Level 2 is going to play very much like level 1, and then level 3 is the first time that things really change for us. At level 3, we're going to get the ability to cast two second level spells per day. What you will probably use both those spell slots on is spiritual weapon, so you definitely want to prepare spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon is far and away the number one choice for a third level cleric, and it's probably going to be something that you keep on your list and you continue to cast throughout the career of your character. Now, Spiritual Weapon does have scaling opportunity every two levels higher you cast it at. So if you cast at 4th level, 6th level, 8th level, you're going to add a d8 to the damage. Uh, and generally, I think that's not necessarily your best use of spell slots. That's not fantastic scaling. But the thing about Spiritual Weapon, the reason you want it, is number one, it's not going to interfere with your concentration. Spiritual Weapon, unlike most spells like Spiritual Weapon, doesn't use concentration. This means we can combine it with our bless, and if we bless ourselves, the bless will impact our spiritual weapon attacks as well as our own attacks. And what spiritual weapon will do is it's a bonus action to cast, and on the turn you cast it, it will make an attack, and that uses your spellcasting ability modifier, so it's based off your wisdom. Uh, and you can attack an enemy, and if you hit them, it does a d8 plus your wisdom modifier to damage. This will probably be as good as, or perhaps even better than, weapon attacks that you use. So what we're really talking about is doubling our offensive power because we're still making our weapon attacks, including the round you cast the spiritual weapon. This really pushes the cleric into becoming a premier offensive class. Uh, we've already got a good armor class and good defense, uh, but spiritual weapon is going to give us a great offense. And like I said, because it is a bonus action, that means on round one you can cast a spiritual weapon and you're going to get two attacks right from round one. Now it's going to use up your bonus action every round, but we're probably not using our bonus action for anything else except perhaps healing word. So at level three, I actually recommend that you might want to consider switching off your healing word for a regular cure wounds. Uh, because definitely... If your spiritual weapon is better at attacking than you are, uh, so for example, if you are a cantrip user, uh, you will find that you will not want to sacrifice your spiritual weapon on your turn. You're better off sacrificing your own action, which would make Cure Wounds actually a potentially superior choice. Now, Cure Wounds is a touch spell, so that does mean you would need to move to whoever needs it. That's usually something you can accomplish if you're not making a melee weapon attack, and it will actually heal more wounds than a healing word will. So I actually find that once I'm level 3, my better choice for a cleric is to switch to cure wounds. Now at level 3, I'm still using my bless. But the way I'm going to use it is going to change. Uh, because on round 1, even in a big combat, I'm not casting bless first. I would start with my spiritual weapon on round 1, and then follow it up with a weapon attack or a cantrip, uh, and then on round two, I would start up my bless. And at level three, you're going to find that, yeah, the offense of your character becomes pretty good because extra attack hasn't come into play yet. So, you know, the fighters and paladins and rangers and barbarians, they still only have one attack with their attack action. 
Now, there's certain ways they can get another attack with a bonus action, but that tends to be an inferior attack. They're either doing a d4 damage or they're using two weapon fighting, so they're probably doing a d6 damage with both their primary and secondary attack. Uh, and we will probably be looking at d8 damage for weapon strikes and for a spiritual weapon twice every round. So we actually may be the best offensive character at level 3. And once again, at level 3, if you are a weapon user, you are probably going to find your offense is superior to a cantrip user. Uh, but that will change very quickly. Level 4 works very much like level 3, but now let's talk about level 5. So at level 5, again, there is a spell that just stands out that we absolutely want as a cleric. And that spell is Spirit Guardians. Spirit Guardians is one of the best spells for its level in the entire game. Uh, and it is a defining spell for clerics. It is one of those spells that, as a cleric, I think it's a must-have. Uh, so right when I get to level 5, the very first spell I'm putting on my third level preparation list is Spirit Guardians. Now, if you are a good cleric or a neutral cleric, you'll be doing radiant damage with your Spirit Guardians. If you're an evil cleric, you're doing necrotic damage. And no matter which of those you are, Spirit Guardians is fantastic. Ultimately, there is a small advantage to doing radiant damage over necrotic damage because resistance and immunity to radiant damage is more rare. Uh, but neither of those damage types are resisted very often, so this remains an incredibly effective spell in almost every combat. And this creates the classic combination for a cleric in combat. Uh, so starting at level 5, number 1, if you are not a weapon using cleric, you are a cantrip using cleric, you're going to find the difference in offense between yourself and a weapon user is gone. Uh, now a cantrip is just as good as a weapon attack for a cleric, maybe even better, uh, and that only becomes more in favor of cantrip users as we go up in level. So in terms of effectiveness, cantrip users are as good or better than a weapon user level 5 and later, but from levels 1 through 4, a weapon user tends to be more effective. But regardless of whether we use cantrips or weapons in combat, what we're going to be doing is on round 1 of an important combat, we will begin the combat by casting Spirit Guardians. Uh, then on round 2, we will cast our spiritual weapon, and then we'll do something like a weapon attack or some other action. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about other actions we might take. And then after that, we just do our standard combination where Spirit Guardians is doing damage to maybe one enemy, maybe several enemies. Uh, then we will have our Spiritual Weapon do damage to enemies, and then we'll be using our action for something as well. Now, if we are using a cantrip or we're using a weapon, we're actually going to find that that is probably the least important of those three things. The biggest damage is going to come from our Spirit Guardians. Now, Spirit Guardians is a concentration spell, so that means we're not casting Bless very much anymore. Uh, but we can't cast Spirit Guardians in every combat, so I would still consider keeping Bless and using it maybe for the less important combats. But for the important combats, Spirit Guardians is so much better than Bless. You really have to cast it. Now, the thing to note about Spirit Guardians is we have a great duration. It lasts for 10 minutes. That's 10 times longer than a Bless spell lasts. So that means when we cast Spirit Guardians, we can expect there's a good chance it will last until our next short rest. Uh, and then what we probably want to do is each time we take a short rest, then when we get into our next combat, we're going to cast Spirit Guardians. Now because of that duration, sometimes we will go into combat and that Spirit Guardians will already be up. So when it is up, then what we're going to do is we're going to jump right to our round two tactics where we're going to get our spiritual weapon going and begin doing other actions. Now one thing I occasionally get told, and I've been told this by multiple people, is one of their problems with clerics is because spiritual weapon is so good, and because spirit guardians is so good, you basically have to do those two things, and then you feel a little bit like playing a barbarian, where you're just doing the same thing in every combat. Uh, but there is something they're missing. The spiritual weapon is using our bonus action up every round, the Spirit Guardians is using our concentration, but we still have our action. Now, we might cast a cantrip with our action, we might attack with a weapon with our action, but there are a lot of other things clerics can do with their action. One thing we might want to do with our action is the thing that always gets forgotten, and that is the dodge action. If you are in combat, 
and you have Spirit Guardians up. You could be doing damage to several different targets, and you're controlling them because they have half movement within the effect. Uh, so you can expect you might be a target of attacks. Now we are going to have a good armor class, but if you dodge as well, they'll have disadvantage on those attacks, and you could draw a lot of enemy attacks without being hit at all. And the great thing about a dodge action is it doesn't use a resource. It doesn't require any special character planning. All clerics, all characters can do the dodge action. And if you expect to be the target of a lot of enemy attacks, then the dodge action isn't a bad choice. But for a cleric, it's especially good because we're still doing damage with our spiritual weapon. We're still doing damage with our spirit guardian. So we're still being effective in combat while boosting our defense. But there are a lot of other options for clerics. Remember, clerics are primary spellcasters. That means they have a lot of spell options. And although our concentration isn't available, and although our bonus action isn't available, our action is available. So as long as we're casting one action casting spells that don't use our concentration, we can do those in addition to our spirit guardians and our spiritual weapon. We just can't do it on the same round we cast either of those spells. So if you want to use a low level spell, you have a number of options. There is the command spell, and I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about the command spell. I think it's really good for a cleric once you get to level five. Then there is the cure wound spell, and I talked about that before. Clerics still do heal. Just because clerics don't completely rotate around healing like a lot of people think they do, that doesn't mean healing isn't part of what they do. So having cure wounds prepared is important for a cleric, and remember, we can heal our party members while still being effective in combat with our spiritual weapon and spirit guardians. We really have the best of both worlds. Now, if you really want to boost your offense, uh, again, a cantrip doesn't do that much damage and your weapon doesn't do that much damage. The primary sources of damage at this point are our spells, but if we want to boost that even further, we can do so with something like a guiding bolt or an inflict wound spell. Now, all those spells I just mentioned are all first level spells. So as a fifth level character, you're going to have a number of first level spells to cast. So you can feel free to do one of those once in a while. Now, if you want to use a second level spell, there are a few I suggest having ready to go. Uh, one I recommend is having Lesser Restoration available. Lesser Restoration is a spell that you're not going to cast that often because often nobody needs a Lesser Restoration. But when they do need it, they often really need it. Uh, so having it prepared is very helpful and a very good use of your action when it's needed while well, you're still concentrating on your Spirit Guardians and using your Spiritual Weapon. Another spell that you really need it when you need it is protection from poison. If a party member gets the poison condition, that can be debilitating. It really depends on the kind of character. If it is a character that concentrates mostly on spell casting, they might have lots of things they can do that the poison condition isn't going to affect. But if something like your party fighter gets the poison condition, that is a problem and you can fix it. You just need the protection from poison spell. And again, it's not going to interrupt your regular combat routine. And speaking of spells that can help other party members, the aid spell is something you might want to consider on your action. Now, the aid spell is going to pick three party members and it's going to increase their maximum hit points by five. But the other thing aid does is it will give five additional hit points to three characters. So even if they're already the recipient of an aid spell, you can restore five hit points to three characters using the aid spell. Furthermore, you could have multiple characters that are incapacitated and you can't do cure wounds three times in one round, but an aid spell would provide five hit points to all three characters. Uh, and it could potentially bring three incapacitated characters back into the action. But if we want to focus on our offense even more and we're willing to expand a second level spell slot, another option for us is the blindness deafness spell. This is a spell that can debilitate an enemy and it's not using up our concentration. Blindness Deafness is also a spell we might consider scaling at higher levels because we can target multiple enemies with it. Now, once we get into higher levels, there's probably even third level spells we would consider casting in the middle of combat. One spell I definitely recommend that all clerics have prepared is Revivify. Revivify is the best way to bring back another character that's gone down and died in combat. Uh, it is only usable within the first minute after that character has died. Uh, but when it's a PC that's died, that's usually easy to do. 
and it's not even going to interrupt with our spirit guardians or our spiritual weapon. The other spell that I strongly recommend that clerics prepare is Dispel Magic. Again, this is not a spell we're going to be casting every combat, but when you need it, it can be incredibly effective. And Dispel Magic can be used both to bolster allies who maybe have been struck with a spell, and then you can remove it from them, or maybe a spell effect that's affecting the battlefield in a poor way. Uh, we have an enemy wizard who's uh, maybe done a hypnotic pattern. We can drop the whole thing. And remember, even if you cast Dispel Magic as a third level spell, it has a chance to Dispel Magic of fourth level or higher as well. Once we get into fourth level spells, look at freedom of movement as something you might want to have prepared. Uh, again, it's one of those spells you're not going to cast very often, but when you need it, you really need it. When we get into our level five spells, if we again want to concentrate on our offense, one of the best offensive spells for that level that works with spirit guardians and spiritual weapon is contagion. Uh, contagion is a touch spell and it doesn't use your concentration and it's going to provide the poison condition to an enemy and they have to make a lot of saves before they get rid of it. Once we get into our fifth level spells, one spell I think you definitely want to prepare is greater restoration. Uh, because Greater Restoration, like Lesser Restoration, when you need it, you really need it. And Greater Restoration can take care of all kinds of terrible effects, like Stun, which just ends a character's abilities in combat. Greater Restoration can totally fix it, and again, it's not interfering. Now, if we want an area of effect, we might want to consider Flame Strike. Now, Clerics, unless you're a Light Cleric, are not really based on doing area of effect damage, and Flame Strike is kind of a so-so spell. But if you can get a lot of enemies, you got those enemies that are clustered, anyone who can contribute area of effect is going to be effective. So it is something you might want to consider. And as we go into our six level spells, another two spells we might want to consider is number one, if we really want to concentrate on our offense, harm does do a lot of damage. Uh, but the spell I definitely recommend you prepare as a six level spell is heal. Heal heals 70 hit points with a single action we can't come even close to that by scaling Cure Wounds. So the point I want to get across is don't buy into this idea that because you're doing Spiritual Weapon and because you're doing Spirit Guardians pretty consistently that that means the Cleric doesn't have options. You have all kinds of options on your turn. Doing a cantrip, doing a weapon attack, it's free so you will want to do that a lot of the time. But you will have lots of different things you could do if you're willing to expend a spell slot. Using the Spirit Guardians, using the Spiritual Weapon, doesn't make it so that you can cast other spells. There are a ton of useful spells in combat that you will be able to access. Now, I've talked a lot about Spirit Guardians here, and I want to talk a little bit more about it. Again, it's very important when we're talking about Tactics of Clerics, we talk about Spirit Guardians. As I mentioned, it's one action casting, concentration for 10 minutes. This is going to give you an aura. It is a 15-foot aura of the Spirit Guardians. And one of the great advantages of Spirit Guardians is there's no friendly fire. So you can be right beside your allies, cast Spirit Guardians, and it will not impact them. But any enemies within a Spirit Guardians or that enter the Spirit Guardians are affected. The first thing that happens is anyone who is within the area of a Spirit Guardians has their speed halved. Uh, so that can be a huge difference in a combat. Uh, the second thing that happens is as soon as they enter the area, or if they begin their turn there, they will be making a wisdom saving throw. If they fail that wisdom saving throw, they'll be taking 3d8 damage, either radiant or necrotic. And then if they make their saving throw, they will take half. Obviously, for Spirit Guardians to be effective, we want to get as many enemies within that 15 foot radius as we can. So here we have our cleric who has cast Spirit Guardians. So we can see there's a number of enemies around. We have our 15 foot radius that's shown by the yellow aura around our cleric. As you can see, it will move with them. Uh, and then around them, they have some enemies. So what we want to be doing on our turn is to always move into the place that gets you the most enemies within the Spirit Guardians. So in this case, I might do something like this. So when we move here, we have five enemies in our aura. So we'd be looking at 15 D8 damage with a third level spell. Uh, and that's just one round of damage. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the tactics in a combat like this. Uh, let's just say these other enemies, they're like orcs. Offensively, they're not nearly as scary as this guy right here. This guy here, let's say he's an ogre, so he has a much better chance to hit, and he does a lot more damage. 
Now there is some concern that on the ogre's turn, they might even with a half movement be able to move 10 feet and attack us. If they attack us, there's a good chance they'll hit and there's a good chance we'll lose our concentration. If we lose our concentration, then we lose the spirit guardians and we don't want that to happen. So this is where I would consider using something like the command spell. If we were to use the command spell on this ogre using our action, uh, we could have it fall prone. And if it falls prone, it's gonna lose half its movement. So if it uses half its movement to get up, if it wants to stay within the area of effect of our spirit guardians, it is going to only have a five foot movement. So that will not be enough to get it in range to attack us. Another thing we might want to consider is cover. Uh, so if we could move somewhere to get cover, let's say we move maybe behind this orc, or maybe there's other party members, or maybe there's terrain on the battlefield, that's also something we'd want to consider because this ogre might have some kind of ranged attack. And if it does, then we will want to have the best armor class we can, make it as hard as possible for that ogre to hit. Now here's the great thing about Spirit Guardians with Clerics. Spirit Guardians is always going to be effective for us as we move up in level because Spirit Guardians scales better than pretty much any other spell in the game. Because as I mentioned, in the situation we're looking at, we'd be looking at about 15 d8 damage. But if we were to scale Spirit Guardians to a fourth level spell, that would become 20 d8 per round. If we were to scale it to a fifth level spell, it would become 25 d8 per round. So with an additional five dice of damage every round that we have this spell, and the spell lasting 10 minutes, you can imagine just how much it could be uh, in terms of enhanced damage by scaling Spirit Guardians. So it ends up being so like a Spirit Guardians cast with a fifth level slot is probably as good or better than any other fifth level spell that you can cast that does damage. So as our cleric goes up in level, when we get to seventh level, when we go up to ninth level, when we go up to 11th level, what we will probably wanna do is use Spirit Guardians in every combat. And then we can cast it as a third level spell in the less important combats, but in the more important combats, we could cast it as a fourth or fifth level spell. But that doesn't mean that Spirit Guardians is always the spell you want to concentrate with the Cleric. Uh, it is definitely the spell you want to concentrate on if you're taking on several enemies and you're in close, but sometimes you're taking on a single enemy or maybe just two enemies, or maybe the enemies are further away. Then we might want to consider some other spells for a concentration. One I might want to consider is when we get to fourth level spells is Banishment. Now Banishment is going to give us a 60 foot range. Where I would find banishment to be useful is maybe if I'm just taking on a couple enemies or maybe I'm taking on enemies and the ones I really want to take out aren't close to me. Uh, maybe we have a spellcaster and they're hiding behind a bunch of fodder. Yeah, we could take out that fodder with a spirit guardians, but that spellcaster is a big thorn in our side. These are the kind of situations where I would want to consider a banishment spell because if we were to take out that spellcaster with a banishment spell, we then could take out all that fodder well, that spellcaster is gone, and when they reappear, lo and behold, the party is going to be surrounding that square. And I'm not going to talk about all these spells in detail, but as we get into fifth level spells, spells like Dispel, Evil, and Good might be something we want to consider. Spells like Holy Weapon might be something we want to consider, especially if we have a character that can deliver a lot of attacks in a single round, something like a fighter, for example. At 6th level, something like a Blade Barrier can be a very useful battlefield control spell. And then at 7th level, we can get Conjurer Celestial, and we can get a Coaddle, and a Coaddle has all kinds of uses. I will probably be talking lots in detail about Conjurer Celestial in a later video. And then as we get into the super high levels, we have things like Anti-Magic Field, we have things like Holy Aura. So it's not like Spirit Guardians is always the spell we're going to be concentrating on. But I would say with a cleric, I would expect that to be the primary spell that I'm concentrating on. So let's talk a little bit more about our spiritual weapon, because I talked about casting it every time once we get to third level and higher. And at third level, spiritual weapon is going to make a massive difference. What we're going to find is as we go up in level, it is going to become less and less effective in a smaller and smaller portion of our overall offensive capability. That doesn't mean we don't want to cast it. It's a bonus action. It's not using our concentration. It's only using a second level slot. Uh, so if we don't have anything else to do with our bonus action, I would still cast Spiritual Weapon and just get that little boost. Uh, but it is going to become 
an increasingly little boost. Now we can scale it, but it requires two spell levels to scale. And remember, it's only attacking a single enemy. So this is a far less effective scaling than our Spirit Guardians is. So as I mentioned in my first video, clerics aren't about healing. The most important things that a cleric does are about their offense. They will be great at delivering damage. Through the spiritual weapon, at level 3, we're going to find that the cleric is as effective at delivering damage as the martial characters. And when we get to level 5 and we start casting spirit guardians, we're not just effective at doing damage to single targets, we become effective at doing damage to multiple targets, and we are controlling the battlefield at the same time. And we're doing all of this without any friendly fire at all. Uh, that's something that sorcerers and wizards have more difficulty with. And because Spirit Guardians last for 10 minutes, that means one third level spell slot can potentially get us through several combats. So if you're playing something like a wizard and you take Fireball, you cast that Fireball and it does something, but one round later, that spell slot is gone and it's done. Uh, but with Spirit Guardians, it's gonna deliver every round, round after round, combat after combat. So those are the basics of how to play a cleric. Now next week what I want to do is I want to start looking at the feats we might want to take with our cleric. There's certain feats I think are must-haves uh, and there's other feats I think are nice to have. So let's talk about those next week and I hope you'll join me then. But until then, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks Optimancers and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.